Photographers can have a lifetime to find interesting stories and projects to work on, but the most compelling and unique photo essay I ever worked on is about my family. You see, my mother and my father were born blind, and I became a photographer. That irony is at the center of my life. Growing up with blind parents gave me lots of experiences that convinced me that it was important to show what their lives were like, and I turned my memories into this project called The Blind Scene. My beautiful, wonderful parents, Harold Snyder and Gail Snyder, are from different countries, but they had similar childhoods. My father was born in Jacksville, Florida. His parents were delighted to have a healthy son, but he was born blind due to an injury during his birth. My grandmother had no experiences with blindness, but she learned how to read Braille, and she transcribed print books into Braille form, and vigorously supported his education. He became the first blind child to graduate from the public school system in Jacksonville. He went on to Georgetown University and Oxford University and created a career for himself as a consultant on handicap travel and civil rights for the disabled. My mother is from England. She was born with partial sight and her parents placed her into a school for blind children. When she was about the age for 10th grade, she was an undeniably intelligent young woman and she was selected to be the first blind child in England to attend public school with sighted children. My mother went to Birmingham University and graduated with a degree in modern languages, and she went on to study social administration at the London School of Economics. In 1969, my mother was working in London as a braille proofreader at the Royal National Institute for the Blind, and along came this American named Harold Snyder and they clicked like a pair of handcuffs. Two weeks later, they were engaged, and two months later, they were married. And about a year later, I was born. When a blind couple has a baby, it's easy for sighted doctors and nurses to be concerned that a blind couple might not be able to take care of their new baby. Sighted parents don't know what they're doing when they have their first baby, and neither did my parents. So my parents had to learn just like everyone else does and they took excellent care of me and my little sister Ellen when she was born about two and a half years later. And we turned out to be fun, healthy, normal little kids. After spending four years at Oxford, my father came back to the US and applied for over a hundred jobs. He kept getting rejections, mostly because employers didn't want to deal with a blind person. He applied to be a foreign service officer at the State Department, but they weren't hiring any blind employees. They were blatantly discriminating against blind applicants. And he got his bachelor's degree from the School of Foreign Service at Georgetown University. So he eventually got hired by the Smithsonian Institution. At the Air and Space Museum, where my father worked, he suggested that they build an exhibit for a sample of moon rock and make it available for everyone to touch. So now, in the top museum in Washington, D.C., millions of people have come to touch this little piece of moon rock. My father's job was to improve access to the museum's exhibits, and that was his specialty, handicapped accessibility. And this also was his career. He was a militant, aggressive advocate for the blindness community, for the disability community, and his highest career achievement was when he became one of the authors of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is the landmark legislation that outlaws discrimination against the disabled. So when I go into an elevator and see the Braille numbers, I know that my father wrote those words that became the law, which mandated that Braille be installed in all elevators and other public places. My father had a very intense, competitive side. He was very aggressive and wasn't worried about upsetting people. He was only worried about bigotry succeeding. My parents had their own language, which was Braille, but I was a sighted child, and my language became photography. In college, I went to the School of Visual Arts. I fell in love with the Magnum photographers and their focus on humanistic documentary photography. And I traveled in the US and in Europe, photographing the poetry of the human landscape.
When I was 20 years old, I was in a serious bicycle accident and I realized that I could have lost my life. I also knew that if I had died, I still would have never have documented the most important subject of my life, my parents, my family. Nobody had photographed their blind parents before in the history of photography. So I knew that I had an opportunity to create something very meaningful to me and that I could use to show the sighted general public how wonderful and effective and interesting my parents are and also how normal they are. So I came home with my camera and I negotiated with my parents about doing a photo essay about them. They said, well, we're not going to pose for you. We're just going to go on about our business. And so I said, sure, sure, no problem. I knew my parents' lives very well, so I planned to document them at work and at home and show their adaptations that help them to live independently. I was always looking for interesting moments during their commutes to work. Here my mother is surrounded by people reading newspapers while she is working on one of her never-ending knitting projects. There were situations that I noticed were visually interesting among our routine activities. This is a picture of my dad getting into our car with the brick wall behind him and reflected in the car's roof. There's another photo of my dad getting fitted for a suit. Getting clothes together was something I liked doing with him. He wanted to look crisp and professional and I always made sure he looked good. There were lots of wonderful moments between my mother and my sister that I just knew happened all the time in most people's families. I just had to pay attention to get them on film whether it was in the kitchen, a mother consoling her daughter, or a teenager laying on the ground, talking on the phone while her mother listens and smiles, or when Ellen was getting ready for her senior prom, our mother touched her hair and her dress and got a sense of what her outfit was like. This was a real challenge for me, to photograph a true documentary about my family and record a moment in time that I thought would never end. At my dad's office on Independence Avenue, his windows looked out onto the National Mall. It was a great view, but that didn't matter to him. He just wanted to work on his computers. His computers had speaking technology, which at the time was a real breakthrough. At my mother's office, she also had a tremendous window overlooking George Avenue. She's a social worker for people that are new to blindness, and she helps them receive job training, and support services like counseling or volunteer shoppers or readers. She spent more than 30 years at this, directly helping blind people get connected to resources that can make their lives better. My father still had a small amount of residual vision. Most blind people can still see a small amount of light and he could see the lamp in this restaurant. And sometimes he could direct them at someone he was talking to, as in this photo with this waiter. There were lots of sweet moments that reminded me of my childhood. As here you can see my parents with a friend's newborn baby. It showed me how tender my parents were when they were raising me and my sister. I tried to capture the physical connections we had to each other. We always walked together. Our parents' hands would lightly hold onto our arms and we guided them everywhere we went. Now if you can imagine leaving your house with your parents and walking with them arm in arm every single time for 20 years, you wouldn't know any other way. The problem with being blind is not the physical handicap. It's the low expectations and opinions of the sighted general public that hold blind people back. This is something I learned as a child and was reinforced by seeing the ignorance that my parents had to put up with and by hearing about the humiliation that their friends had to deal with. And so, because of all this low-grade discrimination, like sighted people don't think that this blind job applicant would be a good employee because they can't see, or that blind parents are thought to be incapable of taking care of their children, these low expectations convinced me that it was important to document two highly functioning blind people who were actually just normal once you got to know them. There are blind superstars like Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles, then there are also lots of blind lawyers, doctors, scientists, and college graduates. Yet, there's still a 75% unemployment rate amongst working age blind adults. That's because blind people aren't given the chance to prove themselves. 
These are people with families. They need to make a living. My parents had to forcefully defend their right to be in charge of their own destiny. My feeling is that the camera is an instrument of love for a photographer. We point the camera at the things we love the most, and I treasure my family the most. In my case, I was able to document this period of time where my parents were the focus of my love.